Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of So You Want to Lead a Party. Uh, no, you're not imagining thing. I am wearing my Santa Claus sweatshirt because uh, it's very cold here in Chicago. All right. So today we have a special guest. It is comedian Freddie G. Freddie, you want to join us? Oh, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Hey, this is fantastic. I followed you on Twitter but I've never had the chance to really interact with you. So this is a pleasure. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, great to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know your yeah. name till now. You're just musings on there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Twitter, I am musings of an, uh, a musings of an idiot because yes, I can say smart things, but also I can say <laughs> really stupid things. Set the bar low. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know which way I'm going to come. Yeah. All right, so welcome to So You Want to Lead a Party, and I understand that you have selected a person from history. Who's your person that you selected? Uh, Ulysses S. Grant. Ah, yes, yes, the 18th president of the United States. So what made you choose uh, Ulysses? Just, uh, well, first of all, like, if it's, I mean, I never played D&D, but he can lead people into battle. He's not scared of anything. Uh, yeah. He was not scared of bullets. The thing in the Civil War was like a lot of the generals weren't scared of bullets. And then a lot of them just got shot and died. So that happened all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, but Grant. So Grant easily could have just got killed at any point in the war. But he wasn't scared. Uh, and he really he really turned his life around uh, in 18 in the 1850s. He was he was failing at every business. Yep. And then uh, by 1865, he had won the Civil War. Yeah, pretty much. So real quick, uh, uh, so people might know this, they might not. His actual name is Hiram Ulysses Grant. And his dad, he was born in Ohio and his dad was a tanner. And his dad uh, had him apply to be in West Point. And to get into West Point, you need a senator to recommend you or something like that. When the senator did the application, he thought that his first name was Ulysses. He thought Simpson, his mother's main name, was his middle name. And so that's how he became Ulysses S. Grant. But yeah, like you said, he, he went to West Point. He did middle of the road at West Point. Uh, he met his wife, who was the sister of one of the guys he went to school with. Did great in um, the war between Mexico and the U.S. And then... He failed after he retired from the military. He couldn't keep up a farm. He was working at his dad's business in Illinois. And then the Civil War happened. And all of a sudden, that's where he got his, his reputation from. And that's also where he got a lot of success from. Uh, because he was able to keep the Mississippi River for the union side which is a huge thoroughfare for getting supplies in and out yeah and yeah once they got that the war was pretty much over that's the right. real turning point yeah 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 and then he became a nightmare for robert e lee so <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's how it works and after um abraham lincoln was assassinated uh was it Robert Johnson? Uh, Andrew Johnson, yes. Yeah, Andrew Johnson, over. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He took over, and Ulysses did not agree with a lot of Andrew Johnson's policies for the Reconstruction, and so that's how he became the Republican candidate for the next election. And I guess Ulysses ticked off some people in his first term, so the Democrats and the liberal Republicans joined together and put forth a uh, new candidate to go against Ulysses in the new election. Uh, his last name was Greeley. Uh, he was- Oh yeah, Horace Greeley, magnet. yeah, yeah. Right, exactly, wow. You, you're so much better with names than I am. I'm horrible with names. Oh yeah, I, yeah, it just happens, yes. Yeah, things stick in yeah. my head. Uh, names stick in my head for some reason, yeah. Not of people That's I met, awesome. only of- uh, only of, of Democratic presidential candidates in 1872. That's it. That's all I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so 
people probably also know this too. So if I'm giving you repeat information, I apologize. But the Republican Party at that time is not like the Republican Party of today, just like the Democratic Party at that time is not like the Democratic Party of today. Okay. Um, so yeah, he actually got like 56% of the popular vote in that second uh, election. So people really liked him. Problem is he had a lot of scandals. Oh, so many scandals. Yeah. yeah, so many scandals. And it was mostly the people who were around him, but it was also stuff that was happening before he became president that just exploded during his administration. So it was holdovers from other administrations that wound up popping up while he was president. There was the gold ring, the whiskey uh, ring. Um, the gold ring involved his brother-in-law who, yeah, it, it was just uh, a mess. It was one of the most corrupt times in American history. Really that whole period, every everything after yeah. the Civil War. I'm not sure, maybe it was corrupt before the Civil War too, but was very corrupt. Uh, Grant really did nothing to stop corruption. I believe his political mentor was like the head of the machine. I forgot the guy's name, but yeah, he was yeah. really not, he was not one to stand up to corruption, uh, Grant. Well, yeah, that is true. But the thing is, is that he did uh, bring in people to, because uh, I think that's when he uh, created the Justice Department. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So so he did appoint someone to uh, basically uh, foil the gold ring and uh, prosecute uh, people from the whiskey ring. Now, it wasn't really um, it wasn't like these people got into a huge amounts of trouble. I think like one of them got fined like five thousand dollars. But during that whole deal, they had made millions of dollars. So five yeah, yeah, thousand yeah, wasn't that yeah. big of a deal. But after he left the presidency, he still couldn't succeed as a civilian. Right. Um, the only reason that he was able to care for his family is that he wrote a memoir. And the day that he wrote that last page, he died. And yeah, exactly. yeah his family got $450,000 from that memoir. So... Yeah, it was one of the most popular books of the whole century. He was basically the most famous guy in America from when Lincoln was shot until he died. And then until Grant died about 20 years later. Yeah. He was the most famous guy. And it was, yeah, it was, it was very popular and all that. Yeah. But yeah, terrible in business. He got, he lost all his money after presidency. He started a, a basically a business where there was actually a Ponzi scheme with the Bernie Madoff of his day. Lost yeah. all his and all his family's money and had to write that memoir as he was dying. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it it's an unfortunate story, but it's also a relatable story. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you can kind of relate to that where it's like there are a lot of people today who are like, ah, I'm trying to I'm trying to do something great and you don't make it. But he kept going. He kept trying to find ways to make it happen. So I can yeah. kind of relate to that. All right. So. I know that uh, you told me that you don't play a lot of D&D. &D. No, I've right. seen the community episode a couple times. Uh, so hopefully that's accurate, yeah. Oh, it is very accurate. It is very accurate. <laughs> that That is really how a D&D &D game can go and has gone. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you're, you're in great hands because I know very little about D&D. &D, so we're going to make this beautiful. Oh, so how come you have a DN why do you have a DND podcast if you're not that into DND? That's interesting. Oh, I love DND. I love playing DND. I played yeah, yeah. DND during the pandemic. I played DND like Must three times great. a week. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Of it's just that my I'm still learning a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna make mistakes. But like like my bio says, I like history, I like DD, &D, and I know nothing about either. Uh, it's yeah, not yeah. gonna stop me <laughs> okay yes yeah, so you play but you're not you're not usually the dungeon master i am definitely not a dungeon master <laughs> but between the two of us you're the master because i've never played so you know more than me well the funny thing is before uh the uh pandemic happened i was actually in a play called she kills monsters 
and that nice. was about hey, have you seen that play no, no my wife's the stage manager so i'm very uh yeah in lo okay. uh, very uh very fond of theater yes so that play is about um dealing with death but it uses D and D to oh help. nice yeah it's really cool okay so when you're building a character you have races and you have classes so we're going to start with the race so in your thinking of ulysses s grant is he a human animal uh like an animal humanoid is he magical uh is he short is he tall is he Let's big see. is he small he wasn't that tall i okay. know that uh i mean i would think he was he was very human and he was mm -hmm. i don't think he was super tall okay so if you're looking for something that's not uh typically tall we can go with dwarves gnomes uh halflings i think he's got kind of a gnome vibe he has that beard do gnomes have beards or am i making that up so with gnomes they're really tiny they're like you know tiny behind the scenes making everything work kind of thing halflings are are about half the size of a human and they're very strong uh very powerful that sounds more like him yeah he's a halfling yeah Okay, uh, doors also can fall under that too. So uh, with dwarves, uh, mountain can, dwarf. Yeah, I think he might be a mountain dwarf. Yeah. Okay, and then he was from the what? He was from what at the time was a, was the West. Okay, all right. So we can make him a mountain dwarf. All right. So bold, hardy, warrior. Of course, so that guy looks like me. <laughs> If I, I, I don't always have facial hair. He looks, that guy looks a lot like me without the facial hair. All right. Because of the red hair? Yeah, yeah. And All pale right. skin, yeah. Big nose, yeah. I mean, he's, he's got a lot, a lot in common with me. All right, so we'll go with the Mountain Dwarf, which actually goes with the warrior class. All right, so with this one, we're gonna give him a proficiency. All right, so with the tools, all right. His dad was a tanner. So I'm thinking Mason or Smith. See, May. Uh, either of those seems good. Brewer we want to stay away with because Grant Grant didn't always drink, but he never was able to drink and not get too drunk. He had a he had alcoholism. Oh uh, he was it was usually controlled. That's why he actually left the army the first time. Oh. He would in when things were slow. When things were moving, he was good, and he wouldn't drink. He would work. But when things were slow, he would drink, and he would get. They were described as beastly drunk, and he was just out of control. Oh wow! So he had. He's known for being a bit for being an alcoholic, but he was able to not drink most of the time. But when he did drink, it was a mess. Okay. Wow, that is fascinating. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So for his class, we can look at barbarian. Uh, fighter. Uh, I think palette. fighter. People thought of him as a barbarian, but because he his battles, a lot of people died. But he was kind of trying to take advantage, beat the South uh, with superior numbers. He wasn't just getting people killed for no reason. Okay, so with the fighter class, that one uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, with that. Uh, they, they're not always your frontline people. And it sounds like Grant was more of a frontline person. Yeah, he was. Yeah, definitely. So Paladin might actually work better for him. Oh, nice. Uh, they're a holy warrior Classic. bound to a sacred oath. Very much. Yeah, he was very much like, uh, he wanted to keep the union together. Yeah. He was very loyal to the union. Um, because his wife was from the South, so he easily could have been more sympathetic to the South. Uh, yeah. But uh, I mean, his wife, the state his wife was from, I believe, was, a, was Missouri, which is a, was a didn't secede a border state. But his wife was not like uh, an abolitionist by any means. Well, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, yeah. That, uh, that's... yeah. She, 
Yeah. I, I, from what, cause like reading about Grant, yes, he did try to keep the freed people, the freed slaves rights working. He did some really messed up stuff when he came to the indigenous population. Oh, absolutely. And, and so it's, I have to I have to oh, keep completely. reminding myself that people at that time, you got to judge them by what was happening then versus now. It is it is tricky. The same generals who won the Civil War then per- basically did a lot of uh, genocidal activities to the indigenous people. There's yeah. no way around that, unfortunately. So, it's, yeah, the, yeah, and that is the problem with picking a figure from back then. Um, he has an interesting story, but I, yeah, he doesn't hold up to today's scrutiny at all. No, no, because like the the whole uh, situation with the uh, Sioux War, um, I believe that happened during his administration, where there was gold found in the Black Hills. And that so, sounds right. Yeah, and so there, that's when the reservations came up, and that just created even more problems. Because he also talked about assimilating the indigenous people yeah. to Western culture, and that also is still lasting repercussions to this day absolutely yeah i think it was called the dawes act i'm not sure if that was during his administration or after but it's the same idea of yeah make them live like uh, like the white people and just destroy their culture and all that it's really terrible very much so very yeah. much so okay so with this one because he's a paladin he does have magic with them so he has spells but we're also going to look at uh increasing some of his proficiencies. So proficiencies are things like wisdom, intelligence, strength, and charisma. Because he's a paladin, we need to focus in on his strength and his charisma. Because that's where he's getting his power. Uh, Trying to think of the best way to describe it, and I can't think of one. I know he was very charismatic when leading a battle, and he was not charismatic at any other point. Back then? (laughs) Back then, presidents didn't really have to make speeches. They could kind of just be demure. Maybe they would release a speech, but he didn't. It's not like he he was elected because people liked him from the war. He didn't have to, like, speak publicly to get elected. Uh, Right. Yeah, Lincoln's known for his oration, but Grant uh, definitely wasn't. Yeah. All right. So with this, we're looking at adding to his skills. So with Grant, athletics intimidation and persuasion might be three good choices yeah he was very intimidating because you knew he would just keep fighting the battle uh and never stop okay and then you get to choose one more so there's athletics insight medicine persuasion and religion i think he had a lot of insight okay uh well, again only on the battlefield not in business but on the battlefield Oh, gosh, oh, I guess no. D&D is more about battles, so. Well, yeah, he would be- yes. So with your team, you do want those people that are like the front lines that are built like tanks that can take the hits. Yeah. And yeah. then you've got, you know, your spell casters and your healers in the back. And then in the middle, you'll have like your rogues who are like really good spies, as well as some of your uh, fighters, like your monks. Oh, my gosh. Really good spies. Oh, nice. Yeah, Monk would be. Yeah, they can keep quiet. Oh, yeah. All right. Fighting style. All right. This one. He was. Yeah. Uh, Not uh, defense. Uh, And and not really dueling. He didn't get into personal arguments. Uh, Maybe great weapon fighting uh, from the name. But definitely, he definitely wasn't defensive. Okay. He, he was right. the best defense is a good offense. That's how he, he just took the fight to the enemy in the uh, Civil War, which yeah. was very rare. Most Union generals were not doing that. That's part of why the war took so long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the Union always had kind of the advantage in numbers, but they were kind of passive early on, is what, what the history books tend to say. And then the other thing that you do have is that on the Southern side, you did have... Um, other West Point graduates because oh, we did one on PGT Beauregard. He was a West Point graduate and he was at the very first battle of the Civil War and just decimated 
uh, the union side uh, just kick their tail. That battle, yeah. What, which one? I forget, that. I forget the name of that. But, but yeah, that one I'm was like, uh, that was bad. They almost uh, they beat the union bad, and it was near DC. And then they almost thought about like invading DC because right. the union was really caught off guard. Uh, it's a little bit like COVID, the Civil now? War. Uh, so was Sumter is a, is a, Sumter's before that. That's not really the proper okay. battle. They kind of just bomb it and the Union retreats. Uh, okay. I forget the first, ba- I forget the name. Uh, Man- uh, we'll say Manassas. I think it's the okay. first, first Manassas. There might be another name for it. Uh, that might be the Southern name. Uh, I forget. But basically, uh, the un- similar to COVID, the Union and the South both thought that the, um, the, the war would go really quick and they'd win. And then it just kept going and going. It has a lot in common with COVID. And obviously two of the more, COVID and the Civil War, two of the more deadly things in American history. Well, the other thing that didn't help in the Civil War is that France tried to get involved with the um, Southerners because they wanted their cotton. And then England was also providing ships to the Confederates. So it's like, yeah. It, it's, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that the Union won, but at the same time, it's like there was a lot against the Union. All right. So now what you're doing is that because you're a paladin, you pledge an oath. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's a kind of thing Grant was doing. Yeah. Right. He was very loyal. So, so for your choices for oath, uh, conquest, devotion, redemption, vengeance. Um, Either devotion or redemption. Yeah, he definitely didn't see it as a war of conquest. They just wanted to kind of, they all kind of wanted to just get the South back. So yeah, maybe redemption. I think, yeah, redemption sounds like a good one from him. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, he had, there was no desire to conquer new territory or anything. Right. Okay. So the cool thing about D&D that I like is that, yes, there are ways to create really powerful characters but I also at the same time <coughs> you oh, can boy. create um characters that just fit your mood where you're just like eh I feel like playing uh, a bird like person because uh, I like birds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That's nice. Yeah. It's not as compa- it's not all about competition. I bet. No, it's it because you have the dice and everything like that. So it's about luck. It's about how you play things. It's also about working as a team. So you always want to work as, you know, with. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here are the spells that he uh, receives automatically because of his oath. So he was very that. calm, yeah. He stayed very calm in the battle. He kept everyone calm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, was, right. it was very deadly, obviously, these but these Civil War battles, but he kept everyone calm. So now you get to choose five additional spells. Okay. Definitely command, because he was he was obviously he's known to be a commander. Let's okay. see here. Detect magic, cure wounds. He couldn't detect evil and good very much. Uh I would say, uh, I'd say Bless, yeah. Okay, I think we already have Bless. Okay, d- yeah, uh, what was it? There was one, uh, yeah. but yeah, definitely, see. yeah. He definitely command, yeah, he definitely command. Oh, we do not yeah. have Bless. Okay, we do not have Bless, so I can do that. All right, Bless. Okay, All right. Scroll down for me a little uh-huh. bit. I think I saw a good one below. Uh, Purify the Shields of Faith, Aid, Wrath, Sleep, hold on. Maybe not. Oh, calm emotions. He was very calm. Uh, We got that one. Oh, okay. See, always already prepared. Uh, Let's see here. Thunderous smite. Oh man, yeah. I mean, he did do that. They did. You know, he did send Sherman to burn down a lot of the South. So he had a little of that. (laughs) All right, we get two more. Yeah. Or or a vitality. Yeah, definitely. He had one of those. And then one more. Crusader's Mantle. Uh, let's see here. Elemental Weapon. I mean, Crusader's Mantle does seem kind of like him. Okay. And there we go. All right. And we've got his spells collected. Nice. 
All right. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to work on his ability score uh, scores. Uh, so because he needs to rely heavily on strength and charisma, I'm going to put strength and charisma at the two highest. Oh, good, good, yeah. And then after this, you're looking at um, things like, okay, so constitution, if I'm not mistaken, uh, helps with your, uh, come on, Reagan, you know this, initiation score. Yeah, your initiative score. He had a lot of that. Also, he was a big fan of the U.S. Constitution. I would, I would say that. <laughs> That's kind of the whole argument. Uh, a lot of the, the argument of the union was that once you sign the constitution, you can't leave. So they were big fans of that. Was kind of a lot of what they at least said they were fighting for. Okay, uh, wisdom helps you in saves against other spells, and dexterity helps you with things. Okay, so like constitution is your ability to get into this battle and be able to stay in this battle for a good uh, uh, amount of time. Dexterity yeah, 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 that. is basically, can you flip from this tree to the next tree? Wisdom is knowing that um, a tomato is a fruit and how to use it both as a fruit and a vegetable. Yeah, and intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but still using it only in salads. I think it's, yeah, I think it's his wisdom because he'd been through a lot, but he wasn't the, he definitely wasn't like a book smart kind of guy. Okay. Like when so, he knew stuff, he knew how to use it. Yeah. I think he was more wise than intelligent. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'll add a little bit to his dexterity. Yeah, give him a little something. Yeah. yeah. All right. So right now at strength, he's at a total score of 20. So that's his max. Uh, constitution nice. of 15, charisma 14, and his wisdom a 13. All right. So not horribly bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I'll make him. <laughs> then the problem is, yeah, having not played the game, I make him where he's no good at the game. <laughs> Like, oh, he's good in the Civil War, but then we're not, we're not in uh, America in the 1860s. We're in uh, it's completely, a completely different place. Actually, you can't create a game that's set in the Civil War. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense where to use him there. Yeah. All right. So now we're choosing his background. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're looking at who he is as uh, a person. So uh, he could be a folk hero. Let's I thought see. the soldier or knight of the order, maybe. Uh, we do, yep. Soldier, knight of the order. We do have soldiers. Yeah, because I mean that's his thing. He was that he was best at being a soldier. He wasn't. All a, right. Certainly wasn't a businessman. All right. Or and he wasn't from like a rich family or anything. No, he was not. All right. So we get to add in some skills for him. So we uh, stealth and survival might be really good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the battle where he took the Mississippi was kind of stealthy. And I can't remember the name right. of that band. There were two on the Mississippi. Ch Chattanooga? Yeah, yeah. He did He did do that. There's one where he, there's one that's based on the turning point of the whole war that I think is after Chattanooga. Right. <laughs> uh. It's like basically Gettysburg is not really the turning point. Gettysburg is kind of set off by this other battle that Grant did. Because Grant wasn't at Gettysburg. Um, yeah. Ah, so his military r rank, oh, doesn't give us anything. All right, suggested characteristics for his personality traits, we get to choose two. Uh, polite and respectful, haunted by memories of war. I think he's, uh, oh, I mean, I guess that's also, I, I think, oh, we two, but one, uh, I'd say four and eight. Four and eight eight so four yeah he's very is direct full of inspiring cautionary tales I yeah face i mean he has, head on all right yeah i mean he was very experienced obviously fighting in two wars and uh have west point and all that yeah all right ideals we get one 
that root and nation are all that matter. Uh, responsibility, uh, greater. I mean, these all seem like positive things. Uh, I think it's two. I think two. Two. Yeah. He, yeah. he even though he got involved in a couple of scams, yeah. he was trying to live a good life. All right. Yeah, Bond, he was just very he was very trusting and gullible when yeah. and anything relating to business. It really, yeah. Uh not an ideal thing for a president. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah. I mean, he's certainly, yeah, he, you know, he's certainly not an ideal uh considered an ideal president. Yeah, he is a very, very successful general. All right. What do you think about his bonds? Uh, I think the first one. Okay. Uh, and then last but not least are his flaws. Flaws. Okay. Uh, even if the law causes memory. Uh, he obeys the law even when it causes misery. Okay. There's, I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. You know, the wars he was in were quite, uh, were illegal, but quite, uh, caused a lot of misery. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, mm. and not only to people who were, you know, caught, not only to people who you would describe as guilty. Right. Uh, yeah. Cause, um, one battle that he was in, um, I guess he did so poorly that uh, people wanted to pull him out of it. And oh, yeah, Abraham yeah. Lincoln was like, no, that's my guy and he fights and I'm keeping him in the fight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm not and taking the, him out. Yeah, and there were definitely people in the South who got, you know, a lot of bad consequences who weren't in the Southern army and probably didn't even own slaves and just kind of just suffered anyway, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's always, yeah, there's just always kind of, you know, innocent people caught up in armies fighting. So what I'm thinking about doing here with his equipment is I'm thinking about putting him in Effie armor since he is going to be our frontline person. He's yeah, going yeah. to need that armor, that heavy armor to protect him. So I'm giving him some chain mail. So even though we did give him stealth, he's not going to be stealthy because chain mail is uh -huh. very loud. Uh uh, <laughs> not very stealthy, yeah. So he's not going to be very stealthy, but he will be able to take uh, uh, a hit. And I'm going to give him a battle axe. That sounds right. Yeah. And I'm going to give him a great sword. Nice. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Those and generals had swords back then. That was a big thing is that the generals would have their sword and their sidearm. And yeah, he I let the, uh, he let, yeah. He would let the armies he defeated keep their their weapons, their sword, and their sidearm, and they they really appreciated that. He was trying to be kind of gentlemanly about it. And and that's another thing that you find with um, some of these interesting people from history is that they try to be as human as possible in inhuman okay. kind of circumstances. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah, let's see yeah. what we've got here. All oh, right. Nice. Ooh. So his initiative is not the greatest. His armor class is also low. Mm. That's, ah, I think I know why that's low. Yes, she did. I, I think that's that due to the dexterity. Ooh. Same. Yeah. That's low. I might have to. He loves the constitution, way. though. Yeah, that's good. Oh, and he's very strong. Okay. Yeah, he's very strong. I think I'm going to have to change a couple of things around because that armor. Oh, I know why his armor class is low. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let yeah. me go back. He's not wearing his uh, materials. Oh, yeah, you got to wear it. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> that, yeah, it only works if you wear it armor. I know, right? You got to put it on, Reagan. Yeah. Give me a second. My computer's taking forever. Yeah, but that constitution was low. I mean, that initiative was a negative one. Yeah. Well, that was how it was when there wasn't a war. So. 
Yeah. But I really wanted him to be a little bit higher on that. So let's wield where and where. And now let's see what that looks like. Because a nine is low. Like he's getting cut. What's up. it out of? 20? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, actually, it could go a little bit higher than that, if I'm not mistaken. For okay, certain yes, types up. of creatures, it can go higher. Oh, yes, there we are. 16. That's Good. better. Oh, that's a lot better. Yeah. A lot better. A lot better. But his initiative is still kind of low. Um, he's got a good modifier for his athletics. So that means that if he's doing something that requires um, like a jump or a leap or something like that, he's okay. Uh, good modifier for his intimidation. He has disadvantage on stealth because of the chain mail. Oh, yeah, so what yeah. that means is that he has to roll twice, and the lowest of that roll is what he has to go with. Uh, uh, yeah. That'll get you. But he gets That's like playing three. a game in a casino. Yeah, they know how to get you. They make you oh, roll yeah. twice, and you're going to get screwed over. Yeah. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. It's a 20-sided dice. It's anybody's okay, yeah, game so there. Yeah. I, yeah I, uh, when I play video games, I think DZ's a little similar. I'm terrible at stealth. Even like Metal Gear Solid, which is a stellium, I'm just, I'm just running and gunning. Yeah, I can't hide very well. Just like in real life <laughs> with my red hair. All right. So that is our Ulysses S. Grant. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A decent armor class. Spells. We could do some work with that, with the spells. Nice. Yeah. And he's got some good distance on some of his spells too. Hypnotic pattern is, is fun to use because for some of your um, enemies, it distracts them while, while the other parts of your party are able to do some damage mm. there. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's like All social right. media, basically. Yeah. Pretty much. Distract pretty people. much. <laughs> <laughs> Distract them over here and then chop them down over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what did you think about your first time building a character? It was good. I mean, it seemed logical. Yeah. I'm like, okay, they figured this out. Yeah, I'm glad I, I didn't have to invent the game. But now the game existing makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, remind you don't me have of, to reinvent it. It reminded me of buying an engagement ring online. That you have all these sliders because there's like the four C's. There's all kinds of stuff. It's very similar, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I definitely recommend any, any of your listeners out there getting engaged. Yeah. Uh, first of all, if you can talk them out of a diamond, do that. But um, buy it online because when you go to the store, there's less choice. When you're online, you can really play around with it, especially if you're good at D&D, &D, the online. Uh, I forgot the site, but yeah, the online site will really, the sliders and stuff will, will seem familiar. Nice. All right, cool. All right. So, Freddie, what are you up to? What's what's happening? You I post a lot of jokes memes uh so right um mostly on social media right now i have i'll have more shows uh you know every how at one out of every how many people five or ten people in new york has omicron right now so there's fewer shows uh um i would say wait a month or two if you're in new york and then i'll have more shows to come see but uh at orange freddy g twitter instagram tiktok got a lot of jokes out there videos of stand-up memes i'm working on a bunch of sketches uh because i have more time to write so i'm writing a lot of sketches uh, with some awesome people, some people that are mutual on Twitter too that you might know. So uh, yeah, I'll have a lot of stuff coming out. If you follow me on any of those, uh, you can check out YouTube too. Same thing, Orange Freddy G. But that's right. the best place to find me. And there'll be shows coming out. Uh, there'll be there'll be shows that I'm on soon enough in like February. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on oh, yeah, the show. That, yeah. It has been a pleasure. And for all of you out there watching on YouTube and also on Twitter and the other uh, landscapes. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, be safe out there. Thank you for joining us on another episode of So You Want to Lead a Party. Please click the subscribe button, the like button, and don't forget to ring the bell. And if you enjoyed this week's episode, check out last week's video or the YouTube suggested videos. 